Welcome to the Further Light Podcast, presented by Wisconsin Freemasonry, helping you accomplish your Masonic goals through education and more light. And now, I present to you, Brother Chris Ludke. Listeners, scholars, brothers, this is Brother Chris Lickie, and today I want to explore another summer short. In this case, looking at the golden ratio, and more specifically, I'm looking at a piece of Masonic education adapted from the Grand Lodge of Wisconsin Masonic Study Series, Volume 2, Issue 2, October 2016. And this is the golden ratio by now most worshipful Brother Dave Ritchie. The golden ratio. As we ascend the winding stairs, we are admonished to be lovers of the seven liberal arts and sciences. Throughout the degree, we are reminded of the importance of geometry, is found in the staircase, the beautiful G lecture, and in the charge. We are told it has many useful applications, from laying out armies to astrological observations. We is eventually equate geometry with the divine. Today, it seems strange that we take the mathematic principle of geometry and give it religious significance. Did we as Masons at one time revere math as deity? The answer to this lies in the Enlightenment, in the very special, in a very special mathematical concept. During the Age of Enlightenment, men thought there was one universal concept that explained the mysteries of the universe, and they had found it. They had rediscovered a secret lost for thousands of years. A secret known and revered by the ancient Greeks. A secret found in Asia, South America, Polynesia, and the Mediterranean. A secret that explained everything. A secret that bound all things together. The answer was found in a mathematical ratio. The golden mean. Golden average, golden ratio, golden number, divine proportion, or divine number, all names for the same powerful secret. Numerically is expressed as 1.618 to 1, or 1.618, or phi, P-H-I. We find the golden ratio when we divide a line into two parts so that the whole length, when divided, by the long part is also equal to the long part divided by the short part. The magic of this number, though, is not what it is, or how it is obtained, but where it is found. When man began to unravel the secrets of the natural world during the Enlightenment, he found this proportion everywhere he turned his attention. The same ratio that describes a seashell, the way sunflower seeds are arranged in the flower, pine cones, and algae, also was to be found in musical scales, guitar strings, the orbits of the planets, and the human body. Honeycombs and beehives are laid out according to this ratio and are noted for their strength. Generals use the same formula to deploy, to deploy troops for battle, also found that, like the honeycomb, the formation was strong and very hard to penetrate. The Greeks and the Japanese had used this ratio in both art and architecture. The Parthenon contains many examples of this ratio. Japanese pagodas and the Great Pyramids all seem seem laid out according to the same plan. Ancient gardens throughout the Orient are almost perfect examples of this proportion, while in the West, Leonardo's Vitruvian Man is almost perfect to the ratio. The human mind is hardwired to see things that conform to this ratio as aesthetically pleasing. Marketing companies use models whose facial proportions are as close to the golden mean as possible. Simply put, our brothers thought they had stumbled onto the secret of creation. By using geometry, he could explain deity's ordering of all things. In his search for answers, one idea kept popping up. This idea was so important to rational man that almost all books published between 1550 and 1770 show these proportions almost exactly within a millimeter. The concept of the music of the spheres was debated. It could not be coincidence that musical scales, pianos, guitars, the air vents on drums all work under the same law as planetary orbits. 
the layout of the solar system and spiral galaxies. It had to be the handy work of the divine. If we understood geometry, we understood creation. If we understood creation, we understood God. Therefore, geometry and deity were linked. This ratio found throughout nature when applied to architecture, art, and even medicine made it both more beautiful and stronger. To our early brothers, it seems they had found the key which opened so many secrets. And a note on this, the golden ratio appears everywhere, and I'm coming at this from an art historical perspective, but we see that ratio. We see it going all the way back to the Greeks and earlier. And it's obvious. Take your hand. When you look at your hand, you will notice that the first phalange, the first bone upwards from the hand, the first bone in the finger, is 1.618 times longer than the next bone, which is 1.618 times longer than the next. The size of the forearm is 1.618 times the length of the hand. The height of the eye, sorry, the width of the eye is 1.618 times the height in a perfect human proportion. If you look at the leaves of a tree or a plant as they spiral up, you will notice the same ratio. Most worshipful Brother Richie is on to something here. And it goes even further. Many credit cards, maybe many things around us use that ratio for exactly that reason. There may be biological reasons behind it. There's a theorist in art theory and evolutionary biology by the name of Dennis Dutton who argues that that ratio exists going back to Pleistocene man and was used to determine beauty in one another. And so when Most Worshipful Brother Richie says it's hardwired, well, it would appear to be hardwired. It would, be a, it would appear to be the sort of thing that we see all the time. And the Greeks and others used it for exactly the same reason. I teach students every semester. The Greek, Greek temples moved from a ratio of 1 to 3 when it comes to width to length to 1 to 2 to closer to 1.618 to one. The reason is they felt that the human body, the human form is perfection. And so why not make an offering to the gods? They believed that their temples were effectively offerings to the god. Why not make them in the perfect proportion? It's a really interesting idea. And it would seem to attach ideas of deity to ideas of geometry. Thank you for joining me, Brother Chris Lidke, and the entire Further Light team on your quest to find more light through masonry. Are you interested in learning more about Freemasonry in Wisconsin? Visit wisconsinmasons.org to learn more about masonry and access further educational content and more light. Once again, that address is wimasons.org. Any questions, comments, or suggestions, please email us at education at wisconsinmasons.org. And thank you for listening.